In this video, we will walk through an example problem to show how to calculate the current limiting resistor value in a circuit with a single battery and single LED. To understand this video, it will help if you are already somewhat familiar with terms like voltage, current, and resistance, but we will provide a bit of a crash course introduction to electronics so you can follow along. If you are not quite ready for the math, you can check out the video description for a link to a qualitative video that just shows you how to choose the resistor using a simple rule of thumb and some trial and error. You can also check out the description for more advanced videos showing circuits with multiple LEDs in series or parallel. Let's start with a quick review of the physics of resistors and LEDs. Resistor behavior follows an equation called Ohm's law, which you may be familiar with if you've taken a physics course, V equals IR, where V is the voltage measured in volts, I is the current measured in amps, and R is the resistance measured in ohms. This equation is linear, meaning if you plot it on a graph with current on one axis and voltage on the other axis, you will get a straight line. Since I is on the y-axis here, this graph has a slope of 1 over R. This means that if you make a very small change in voltage, there will be a proportional small change in current through the resistor. LEDs, on the other hand, are made from semiconductor materials. Sometimes they conduct electrical current and sometimes they don't. The relationship between current and voltage for an LED is nonlinear and looks something like this. That current is nearly zero until the voltage approaches a threshold voltage, at which point it increases very, very steeply. This means that a very small change in voltage can actually result in a very large change in current. Again, it's important to remember that this behavior is nonlinear and LEDs do not follow Ohm's law. Now, I didn't draw this graph perfectly to scale, but essentially this change in voltage is so steep that we treat an LED like it just has a constant voltage drop across it. However, we need to avoid current over the LED going too high or it can burn the LED out. In practice, what this means for circuit design is that when we connect an LED to a voltage source like a battery, we include a current limiting resistor in series with the LED. As the name implies, this resistor helps limit the amount of current through the LED and prevent it from burning out. Selecting the appropriate value for this resistor is what we'll show you how to do in the remainder of this video. In order to solve for that resistor value, first you need to look up a few things. You need to know the voltage of your battery or power supply. Then you need to know the threshold voltage, also called the forward voltage drop of the LED, and the rated current for the LED. You can find those two things in the LED's data sheet, which you can usually look up on the website where you bought the LEDs. Once you know your battery voltage, the LED voltage, and your target current, then you can solve for the resistor value. For purposes of this example, we are going to say that we have a nine volt battery, an LED with a forward voltage drop of two volts, which is usually in the range for a red LED. This voltage actually depends on the LED's color, and you can look up tables online that show how that voltage changes with different colors. And finally, a desired LED current of 40 milliamps, which is maybe a little high. Usually they're rated more around 20 milliamps, but sometimes you will find them with higher current ratings. So given those three known values, we're going to solve for the resistor value R, and we do that by applying Ohm's law to this resistor. So this is where we are going to get a little into the circuit analysis part of this video. Don't worry if you don't follow this completely. If you haven't taken a physics class, you can just jump ahead to the equation, take my word for it, and use the equation to calculate the resistor value. So applying Ohm's law to this resistor, V equals IR. First, we are going to rearrange that equation because R is the value we want to solve for. So dividing both sides by I, we have R equals V over I. And now we need to figure out exactly what this voltage and current are. The current is easy because the resistor is in series with the LED. So we know the current through them has to be the same. So the current through the resistor has to be equal to the current through the LED. The voltage is the tricky part if you aren't familiar with circuit analysis. Voltage is measured between two points. Voltage is a potential difference. 
So we need the voltage drop or the voltage difference across this resistor. And we can calculate that by measuring the voltage here and the voltage here relative to some other reference point in our circuit. And in a circuit with a single battery, that reference point is usually the negative terminal of the battery, and that is what we would consider zero volts or our ground or reference voltage. So in this case, up here on the top side of the resistor, that voltage is going to be equal to the battery voltage. And then here on the bottom side of the resistor, in between the resistor and the LED, that is going to be equal to the LED's forward voltage drop. The voltage drop across the resistor is therefore the battery voltage minus the LED voltage. So there we have our equation to calculate the resistor value. We have the resistor value R equals the battery voltage minus the forward voltage drop across the LED divided by the desired current through the LED. So in this case, we can plug in our known values to solve for the resistor, where we have battery voltage of nine volts minus the LED voltage of two volts divided by the current. And I have to be careful about my units here. Note that this is listed in milliamps, but I'm going to convert that to amps when using this equation. So my units are consistent. So 40 milliamps is 0.04 amps. And that gives a result of 175 ohms. And you might think, great, okay, we're done. I need a 175 ohm resistor, but there are two additional things you need to worry about and check here. One is the power rating of the resistor itself. Resistors can also burn out if they have too much current or too much voltage across them. And you can calculate the power dissipated by the resistor a couple different ways. So electrical power is current times voltage, but if you substitute Ohm's law into that equation, you can also rewrite that as power equals I squared R or power equals V squared over R. So depending on which parameters you know, you can calculate the power dissipated by the resistor. In this case, I am going to use the I squared R version. So I know the current through the resistor is 0.04 amps, I have to square that value times the resistance value I just calculated of 175 ohms. And that is going to give me a power of 0 0.28 watts or 280 milliwatts. And that could actually be a problem depending on the resistors I have purchased because many common resistors are only rated for one quarter watt or 250 milliwatts. So in this case, with this circuit design, even though I have chosen the resistor value to give me my desired current through the LED and prevent the LED from burning out, I'm going to risk burning out the resistor if it does not have a high enough power rating. And there are a couple different ways around that. One is simply to choose a resistor with a higher power rating, for example, one half watt resistors instead of quarter watt resistors, but that's not necessarily the most efficient option. You might have noticed in this circuit that we are dropping a lot of voltage over the resistor. We have a nine volt battery and only a two volt drop across the LED, which means we are dropping seven volts over the resistor. So one approach would be to choose a lower voltage power supply, then go over and redo the calculations to see if the resistor is now under its power rating. You could also choose a bigger resistor value. This might decrease the current through your LED slightly, but that might not result in a very noticeable change in brightness if it's just a decrease of a few milliamps, so maybe that's okay. This also relates to the second point I was going to mention. Resistors typically only come in specific values. You probably don't have a resistor with the exact value that you calculated on hand. So one option there is to simply choose the next available resistor size up. For example, in this case, 220 ohms is a pretty common size that you could go up to from 175. And this is really a topic for a different video, but you can also combine multiple resistors to give you an equivalent resistor value. So you can combine two resistors in series to increase the resistance, or you can combine two resistors in parallel to give you a lower resistance, or you can make more complex networks of resistors and combinations of series and parallel to give you an overall equivalent resistance to get a more specific value. 
So again, doing all of that is really a topic for another video, but there are ways you can fine tune your resistor value to get closer to the value you calculated if you don't have a single resistor available with that value. Now, I'm not going to work through all of those possible examples in this video, but we will leave that as some homework for you or a challenge for the viewer. For example, assume that you are limited to one quarter watt resistors, so you can't just go ahead and buy one half watt resistors instead. And the circuit design I have here is a problem because I am exceeding the power rating for this 175 ohm resistor. So see if you can figure out a solution, for example, either by decreasing the battery voltage or choosing a larger resistor value here and then calculating the actual current through the LED that keeps the resistor under its one quarter watt power rating. In the following videos in this playlist, all of which you can find linked in the description of this one, we will look at the efficiency of these circuits and how much power is dissipated by the resistor versus the amount of power converted to light by the LED and the amount of power supplied to the circuit by the battery, as well as designing circuits with multiple LEDs, including different configurations like parallel and series, and answer the question whether it matters if the resistor goes after the LED instead of before it in the circuit. Again, you can find all of those videos linked in the description of this one.